what we're going to come on to now is the first practical. And just before we do this practical, I'm going to briefly go through it, briefly explain why we're doing it, the focus of this practical, and I've got a whole load of handouts that I'll hand out to you all, and then you can get on the machine, have a play with it, and um, look at some of these ideas um, in concrete. So this first practical is actually two main aims. The first aim is getting you on the machine, running a parallel program that actually does some input output to the disk, and also we split the practical, so we have a little bit now, a little bit after the break when we've talked in a bit more detail, and you're going to use this practical to explore some of the concepts that we're going to be discussing after the break to do with parallelism. The other aim of this practical is much more logistical. So actually getting you onto the machine, sorting out any user accounts, sorting out problems you might have with your laptops, anything you're not sure about. So please, 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 if you're not sure, ask. Absolutely fine, no problem at all. We're very happy to help you. And there'll be three of us coming around and giving, uh, giving assistance. Now, what we're gonna do with this practical is what's called image sharpening. So we start with a fuzzy image, and we want to improve the quality of that image by sharpening it up, by improving the quality. And believe it or not, actually to us here in Scotland, that's very important. And the reason it's very important is because of this creature up here on the top right. So supposedly this is the Loch Ness Monster. And it never ceases to surprise me, it never ceases to amaze me. Whenever anybody has captured a picture of it, it always looks like this. Really fuzzy, really difficult to tell actually what they've captured. Now, apart from the fact that all these pictures are fake, the reason that images are fuzzy is firstly because of random noise being introduced into them, and secondly, because of blurring. So what we can do is we can aim to improve the quality of the image, firstly by smoothing it to remove that noise, and secondly by detecting edges and sharpening up those edges in the image. And this gives us a nice bit of computation that we can then run an archer and then have a play with. So something like this. We've got an image here which is fuzzy. We do some smoothing. We some, do some detection of the edges to build up this view. And then that gets applied to the original image to sharpen it up and to improve that image. So that's what we're looking, looking for doing in this practical. Now, in terms of the maths, and, and don't worry about this in too much detail at all. You certainly don't need to understand this if, um, if this is not familiar to you at all. But what we're doing basically is for each pixel that we're computing, we're going to replace it by a weighted average of its neighbouring pixels. And we work with eight neighbours in either, either direction in both dimensions, because it's a 2D image. So eight neighbours that way, eight neighbours that way, eight neighbours that way, eight neighbours that way. And as I say, it's weighted, and that's the reason for this top hat. So the contribution from neighbours close by is far more important, it's far more relevant than neighbours much further away. We also apply um, a second derivative Laplacian to detect the edges, and in the code that we're going to give you, this is both combined into a single filter function, single convolution filter, which does both of these things for you. Now on the implementation side of things, basically what the code will do that we'll give to you is it will loop over all of these different neighbours, add in the value at this neighbouring point, along with this filter weighting that comes from this filter function, and then this gives us this smooth edges representation. Then what we do at the end is we add this back into the original image to do some scaling to sharpen it up. And then because of the image format that we're using for displaying it, we've got to do some rescaling just to make sure it fits within that image format. But that's not too, uh, not too much to worry about there. So in terms of thinking about parallelizing this, and again, Neil Ofer is going to talk about this in much more detail after the coffee break a little bit later this morning. What we can do when we're working with each pixel, we can do this entirely independently. Yes, we need the original image, or these neighbours, but the computation at this pixel doesn't rely on the computation going on at another pixel. So what we do is we elect one of the processes, one of the processes to read in the image, send this to every other process, processor, which will then with a subset of the image, work out these edges, bring that all back to the master, which does this final rescaling and writes out the final image. And from this, we actually get three things. We get the sharpened, improved image, and then we get two timings. The first time 
is the calculation time for this computational side of things. So working out the smoothing, working out the sharpening for all these pixels. And the other time, timing, is the overall time, which includes absolutely everything, which specifically includes reading the file in and writing it out. And actually, that's what we call serial. So irrespective of the number of processor cores we run over, that makes no difference the serial reading in, writing out, because it's done by this master process. And again, we're going to talk later on why that's important, why that's very significant, and explore that in the practical. So it looks something like this. We have this master process or processor core here, which reads in the image, sends it out to every other one, which will then cycle round. So the first process, first process of course, starts on this one, second, the third, the fourth, then it cycles around. The first, the second, the third, the fourth, the first, second, the third, fourth, etc. etc. They only do a small number, a small subset of the points, but globally all the points are being covered. So we're going to give you a whole load of different versions of this. So firstly, a serial version for reference, and you're getting you um, running it initially, something that you might be familiar with, and then a parallel version. And the one we're going to focus on is parallelized with what's called MPI with message passing. We have a number of other versions, uh, parallelized with shared variables, something called OpenMP. Don't worry about this technology, this terminology at the moment. We're going to cover it in lots and lots of detail throughout the course. Um, but the first two versions are what we're going to concentrate on um, in the practical. What you will also get that will be a bit different to anything you've seen before, even if you've done some technical work and some programming before, are these PBS job submission scripts. And this is actually what gets given to the batch system to tell it how to queue up your job. So in this script, and it's all in there, everything you need, but you'll see that we tell the batch system the name of the job, the number of compute nodes you want, and then it has a number of other things in it, and then this AP run instructs it to launch this job in parallel on how many cores to run on. Remember, we've got 24 compute cores per compute node, and then the name of the program. And again, slightly later on in the practical, there'll be op the opportunity to play with this and um, experiment with this submission script. So the last slide, in the handout I'm going to give you, we've got the URL in here. I'll also bring it up. On the, um, on the board and write it down. We've got a zipped tar file with everything you need and then the instructions to follow. 